Hi there, Nathan here at Nandi Studio. So today I like to show you how to create this minimalist staircase, which looks amazing in my opinion. And after which we will add a few more steps to achieve this staircase, which looks sick. And hopefully it should improve and or complement your designs. So let's get started. So we'll start with a blank ArchiCAD file because I like to show you from the very beginning. So we will begin with the stair tool. So let's pick the default stair tool and we begin to draw. So let's draw, hold down shift in order to have it in the vertical plane. And at around the 13th step, I'm going to make a turn. And this turn is going to be a landing which has no step at all. So I'm going to hold shift tab to go into the dimension there and put in the new dimension of the landing. In my case, I'm going to use 2.4 and I'm going to also come back here and be sure to change back to the flight mode. Double click to finish placing this thing and I'm going to try and balance it because I like it to be balanced. Well, this is where we'll start from. So let's go to 3D and we would like to change a few things to make it look like what we want. So let's go in the settings by control T. And the first thing that you want to look at is the structure. So let's bring down the structure and uncheck it such that we have just the finish. So we go back to the finish here. So let's choose the tread such that now it starts to look like how we do want it. And in the treads, we can change to like the built-in here because it's totally square and we can adjust how thick it is. And for my case, I'm going to use around 50. So that can be advised for by the civil engineer, depending on the strength of the material and which material we are actually going to use, which kind of timber we will be using. So I'm going to use zero for the offsets because I do not like to see any offsets, but I would have loved if we were able to put in something like negative 50 or negative 25, but it's not possible. So for now, let's just use those and we see what it looks like. And yeah, looks pretty cool. Now let's put in the first shape that is going to create our transition. So let's uh, use a reference line in order to first understand what's going on. So I'm going to make it red so that you can be able to see it. And let's draw, let's draw a shape here. So our curve is supposed to be within here. And I'm going to make this halfway. So let's make this to half. Just be sure to hover over here so that we can see that. And we have those two and such that this is the middle section. And then we can have our curves going on here. So first of all, if we begin from the top here, we are going to make this a fillet. So we click on fillet and make it 200. We say, okay, that's pretty cool. And next we want to also make this when it starts from the top, it needs to stop at the top here. So let's make this uh, also 200. All right, so let's control click to remove the parts that we do not want to see for this particular shape. So those two, delete them because we do not need them. So now we have the basic shape. We could use a morph, but I like to use a shell tool because it's much, much, much easier to edit. So let's control C to copy and I'll come and paste it on the ground floor because apparently the shell tool does not work in the elevation. You cannot apply it in elevation. So let's pick a basic shell. So by double clicking on here, let's make it a simple one at that. And we put in the 50 millimeters that we used for our treads. Let's start it from the ground at zero and use a timber flow material such that it resembles the treads we already created. And 
in the floor plan, I like it to be to look like what we already have. So for the uncut pen, we can change it to the 0.15. And that will be it for now. So we space click to place it. So right now we cannot because we have to first choose this construction method. So space click to place. And apparently we are getting just a section of this. So in order to get the rest, we might need to continue this shape with R. And let's, uh, there you are double click to finish and let's do that again so sp with the shell to space click so now we have it good so we're going to make this 300 deep because that's how a thread is say so, okay and there we are we want to bring this to one of these areas here so we will use an elevation of course to realign it so we need one of these open in new tab and now we want to reorient by ctrl e to rotate and drag it into place so now if we come here pretty cool huh it looks super nice and clean but if we make a copy by ctrl shift d and put it in here we start to have issues because now we need space between this and that which we do not currently have which is going to force us to create our own thread because the default threads cannot be made any smaller so let's create our own i'll use a slab for that in the settings i'd like to make it the one that we use so let's make it 50 and let's choose timber floor material and the pen as well the uncut pen i'd like to make it the 0.15 that we chose for the case of representation so i say okay and begin to place it so by default it looks something like this which is existing but i need to leave some space of about 25 here and 25 this other side so this is the one that I like to use. So let me get it out of here such that you can see, understand what I'm trying to achieve. So we'll just use a polyline here. So let's grab this stuff and move it to somewhere like here. So this is what we want to be able to create. How we use it, we just make a selection, go to file, libraries and object, save selection as, and we save it as a stair thread. And we are going to name it as trade zero one. So when we say save, now we are to show how it's going to be used. So we will use this polyline that we created such that it's located perfectly in the middle. So make two clicks along that line and we say, okay, now it should be saved. So now when we select this there and go to the settings and change from this built-in that I used before to this one here, trade zero one that we have just created. Now we get that smaller stuff that we can adjust what our things look like. And now we start to get that space, which looks pretty amazing. All right, so we lost as well the landing, but it's quite fine for this kind of design. And how do we adjust the height of this thing? Well, it's pretty easy. Just select this thing. And now we need to move the nodes. We just need to move this middle node downward. So make sure we are in the Y axis so you can see it being yellow there. So. Hold down shift and take that down by the 300 to the top of that. And that is going to enable you to also move this downward. Tap tab and go to here and put in 300. There you are. Pretty easy, right? So make a copy. Control shift D. Drag to this one. Go up. Pick this node 
and take it down by 300 in the vertical position and take this down also by 300 in the vertical position. So I will quickly speed through this process. So for the final transitional trade, we might have some issues here because it's getting a little smaller. So let's go and use the south elevation. Yeah, it's looking clean for now. And now we want to be able to move this from all the way up here to right there. And to put that into perspective, we need a polyline here such that we know what we're working with. So let me use another line to highlight the midpoint here. So what we want to do is to just select this shell and move this node even in elevation and take it down. Move this node to here. I think I may need to move this pet palette. It's kind of disturbing. Oh, what just happened? And do that. All right. So, so move this node to there, move the node to where it's supposed to be, which is the midpoint right here. And to clean up this, we might need to make this arc tangential to that line. And we do that with this line here, edit segment using a tangent, and I'm going to use this line as the tangent. And then this one as well, we might need a tangent here. So there we are. Now we have something super clean and cool, right? And that's it. Now we need to also take this all the way up here to make the landing. So we might need to drag this across here, leave a gap of about 50, which should be the same as the gaps we left before and we can edit it even in the flow plan by adjusting the edge here all the way up here make some a few more copies which are 300 millimeters away until we get this and that's it's pretty cool so if you're getting value out of this video be sure to give this a like it helps with the algorithm and push this content to more people. So thank you so much. In context, it should look something like this, which is quite an experience with this kind of stair. Although, although I am not quite convinced about how secure this staircase is. And good luck trying to explain to the authorities how this is going to be safe because I imagine if you had kids in this room, they'll try to glide from the top of this tread all the way down and you don't want that quite insecure. Speaking of which, we can create a much safer one right here. So let's look at how to create one which has the same ideas but much safer.